Welcome to the Security in 5 podcast. I'm Drew, the Binary Blogger. This is a short program that brings you security news, tips, advice, and opinions in the area of information, IT, and general security in about five minutes. Quick to listen to, easy to understand. The more aware you are, the more secure you can be. This is Security in 5. Thanks for listening. Episode 347 of Security in 5, and today we're going to do an Internet of Things Strikes Again episode, and this one is pretty serious because we're not talking about toasters and refrigerators and kids' toys and talking about personal information, um, although that's a serious issue. This one's a little bit more serious because the Internet of Things Strikes Again has now struck medical devices. The FDA released a report recently around a cybersecurity vulnerability that they discovered within uh, Medtronic cardiac devices. That includes pacemakers, defibrillators, rhythm uh, rhythm resynchronizers basically all of the major scary devices that keep people alive keep their lives healthy but when exposed or malfunction can cause significant damage or death and that's a pretty serious situation and in this case a cybersecurity vulnerability was found or a flaw design flaw whatever you want to call it was found within the way the doctors or providers use and interact with the devices implanted in the bodies. So there are things called the uh, programmers. Now these cardiac programmers, I'm simplifying it here, I'll post links to the full report, but the uh, programmers are the uh, ways that the clinics and providers can use to communicate with the cardiac devices um, and get battery status, change the configuration, change the settings, get get updates and, and things of that nature. The problem is is that when it's done over the internet, the vulnerability was that even though the programmer uses a VPN to establish a connection to the Medtronic network, the programmer, the, the device called the programmer, doesn't validate that they're still connected using the VPN prior to downloading updates from what they think is the Medtronic network. Now, this could lead a uh, hacker or uh, a malicious agent to know this and then swing the device to allow it to connect to a trusted network, disconnect the VPN, and then trick it to go download an update from somewhere else, which then, in fact, could then be used to access those devices and do some very horrible and awful things. So the report was sent out. They worked with Medtronic on the back end. Medtronic has issued an update, which the FDA accepted to remediate this vulnerability for the short term, to block the programmers from accessing the Medtronic network. And that way, the programmers cannot download any updates, period. They have to do it through a USB drive or plug it in and do other things. And that's until they remediate it. What's probably going to happen is they'll issue a recall on those programmers to fix the issue. But this goes into the IoT device security debate once again. And this highlights the fact that the nation needs a IoT certification or a security certification process where IoT devices like this will go through a more rigorous, more standardized, more um, uh, government body or regulatory body review process to identify these types of things. Now, a device not validating a secure connection before an action is taken, that seems to me something would be picked up in a design review or an overall um, scan of some kind to be able to test and identify something like that. Other ones are going to be far more complicated to get, but the point is is that they're right now, currently, the IoT security is left to the manufacturers. There is no certifiable standard to go to. I always compare it back to FCC devices. So if you pick up a radio or any electronic device, you flip it over, there's going to be a stamp of an FCC on it of some kind. And FCC says if you make an electronic device, especially radios or those that transmit or receive, it must abide by these set of standards for wireless and and radio communication standard transmission. And if you meet that, you get the stamp and therefore then you can sell it within the United States and interact with other things. We're at that point where we need something like that for the IoT devices that we have a uh, now critical body components, keeping people alive, keeping people healthy, putting in place that has very adverse effects if they're uh, if they're exploited, that the security is up to this vendor or this vendor. We've done our best. We've done our due diligence. And in this case, the FDA found the vulnerability and announced it. But all these devices are being picked at at some level somewhere, some by white hackers, some by not so white hackers. And it's only a matter of time. 
And unfortunately, it, it, it's going to take an event like that in order for the world to realize that security needs to become in the forefront, especially for IoT devices, especially in the medical field. My two cents. Security in five. Be aware. Be safe. Thanks for listening. This concludes another episode of Security in 5. You can find me across the internet under the persona Binary Blogger. Head over to binaryblogger.com to link up with me on whatever social network you prefer. I love feedback and conversations, and if you have a question, comment, or correction on a past episode, drop me a line and I will respond. To get additional information, sign up for my monthly newsletter. And remember, the more aware you are, the more secure you can be. Thanks for listening.